All right, what is up? Welcome back oh, oh, oh. to another video. Uh, this is informative. This is an informative piece, I would say, above everything else, because I'll level with you. If you or a loved one wants to get into camera repair for whatever reason, you would want to do that. Maybe you've seen people on the internet do it and you think, hey, that looks like fun. You know, maybe your friends are doing it and, you know, if they're jumping off a bridge, why not you, you know? Uh, but I'll level with you as someone who's been doing this for quite a while. It is a career path that is pretty much void of pleasant surprises. Now and again, you'll be like, hmm, nice. But it's never like, oh man, that's, that's nice. That is nice. Usually it's, <sighs> okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Or a combination of, come on, my God, what are we doing here? Something like that, along those lines. But today, this morning, in fact, I was actually granted with a, huh, what a lovely surprise. <laughs> and that was when this decided to start working again. This is a Canon T90. I've got the uh, FD 28 millimeter lens on here and you'll notice that there's no adapter because this is just straight up this is just straight up an FD mount lens on an otherwise electrical camera body so I'll get into that in a moment but first I want to talk about why this was such a surprise and that's because I bought this like a couple weeks ago for 20 bucks Mostly because I just, I don't know, I like the look of them. And I mostly wanted to make a video on like, kind of Canon's progression through the years. And this is definitely a very, very pivotal point in their camera lineup. But I got it and it wasn't working. I was getting an error readout and I was like, well, that's okay. So I made another video because the, um, lens mount was actually very loose so it's just a video talking about that and about why it was broken and going into the camera just a little bit but nothing too crazy and then didn't touch it for a while there have been batteries just kind of sitting in it chilling and uh, I go out and do other things run around come back like a week later and I picked it up and I was like oh I'll put a different lens on it and just kind of see how that feels because I've got like a bigger lens. So I tried that out and I shot it and I was like, oh, it's, it's actually, it's just working now. Like all of a sudden, it's just working. It just needed a moment to contemplate its thoughts. So I would say I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by this development because it wasn't and now it is and that's kind of nice. However, however, it's the other part of the, the camera repair industry is that nice little caveat to well now it's working <laughs> but will it work in another week you know if i don't touch it for another little while if i take it out in the field and i'm shooting it or whatever when will it stop working again who's to say because there's just a bunch of gremlins in these older uh, electrical cameras but what I will say is it works now, and for that I'm pretty glad because I do really like this camera, and I want to talk about it very briefly because it is interesting. And it's interesting for a number of reasons. One, it's pretty big, I would say, but it doesn't feel that big because it's pretty lightweight, all things considered. It is very ergonomic, like you'll notice the, the nice like thumb rest back here. The grip is, I would say, just about perfect and I've got fairly large hands but the grip is great and it has a very nice rest for your finger there there's an additional grip down here if you want another way to hold on to it so that's kind of cool it has a pretty decent little dial here this LED screen is pretty fresh pretty clean which I'm stoked about and overall I mean it's it's interesting because this is a clear predecessor to the EOS line that would follow, uh, but it just has an FD lens mount, which personally I really like the FD lenses. I have a bunch and I kind of like the manual focus 
there's just something about this look that I think is, it's, it's like retro futuristic in a, in a degree. And it still has a manual actuation for a stop down lever. And there's just, there's some element to this camera that I really enjoy. Something I also enjoy is this little side panel here to cover all the options. So the back isn't just covered in buttons. Even the buttons that are there are very discreet, very well hidden. And up here, it's very simple text readout, nothing too crazy. Things I don't really like necessarily is the placement of the strap lug here. I don't know where else I would put it, but it just kind of looks a little clunky and dirt can well up in there pretty easily. I've not actually shot with this camera, so I don't know. But I would say that it appears as though, let me see, I think we're looking at something that works fairly well. Yeah, anyway, it's just, this is kind of one of those weird cameras where it is the bridging point between the older style, the older FD lenses, something like a, like a Canon FTB to a T90. Like it's, it, you know, there, there's some, there, there's a pedigree to this camera is what I would say. And I think for a lot of the time that Canon was around, they just didn't really have that as much. I think once they developed like the AE-1, they kind of like solidified themselves as a little bit more than just some other camera company because the AE-1 functioned completely differently than any other camera at the time, all this stuff. And then leading into something like the T90, this is like their, one of their more serious attempts at creating a camera that is directed towards the professional market. This has a really fast uh, motor drive system, has a wide range of shutter speeds. It has a whole lot of different metering systems. It actually does say that there. Uh, the motor in here is like pretty, pretty impressive for the time, I would say. So this is, I, again, I would say that this is a very interesting point, an interesting little pivot in Canon's overall trajectory as a company producing cameras. And for that, I'm really glad that I have one because I do think they're really cool looking. Um, it, it's, it's a nice blend of retro futurism, the plastic adoption that I kind of like because it's like a little bit more purposeful, not that like T50 consumerish plastic, not the, not the T70 stuff, but it's the T90. This is like the crown jewel of Canon at the time. And then when they changed over the lens mounts to the EF mounts, everything kind of changed. But I think this still has some sort of important place as like a flagship camera system for this lens mount in particular. So I'll probably find a way to wax more lyrical. I might try to make a video about this, uh, shooting with this in the future. But for now, I just wanted to, I wanted to commemorate this moment really and just be honest about my my surprise and my elation that this thing that you know i really only spent 20 bucks on works beautifully and is a fantastic uh, addition to my collection of cameras um i am still like i said trying to pare down what cameras i do have i've been selling a lot which i'm very thankful to everyone who's bought and this will probably be there soon enough but i do want to shoot with it a little bit and just kind of see how it plays out because I, I, it's just fascinating to me, it really is. So overall, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll do a more comprehensive breakdown on this camera later, but the, for now, that's pretty much what you get. So hope you enjoyed. Have you shot with the T90? Comment below, let me know. Would love to hear back on people's opinions of this camera and the system in general, and kind of the, the dying light of the OG FD camera systems um, that's it for now thank you again make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content like the video if you enjoyed it all that good stuff i'll catch you on the next one